Yes, we are going to the entertainment district. Yeah, that kind of place. I get it, Zenitsu. It's the entertainment district. They got fun things like movie theaters and arcades. And prostitutes! <laughs> Lots of prostitutes. We faced a lot of challenges and been through a lot of stuff, but I have some fear at seeing my three innocent boys <laughs> heading into the red light district. I'm listening. A humble title for a humble man. <laughs> Ouch. Literally disintegrated. They're already there. Is this another train dream? It's very flamboyant. Tanjiro. I love how he's sincerely asking. Fair enough. Got a festivals. He's like a Greek myth. The girls are just done with this guy. <laughs> yeah, speaking of lofty titles, gods recognize gods. These, these faces are kind of bugging me out. That's true. Rengoku was sort of the match for Tanjiro. Maybe this guy is a good match for Inosuke. I'm putting this show is so damn fast. <laughs> Tengen Uzui. I mean, the Hashiro, Hashiro are all sort of these mythical characters, larger than life, sort of on the, the edge of humanity. Here's opening again. Here are the hostesses. I have a really unbelievable hostess story that I can't tell yet. I think I now understand why Zenitsu is dressed like a lady. Looks like my sweet innocent boys are going to have to infiltrate a certain type of institution. This just gets juicier by the minute. Episode 2. Infiltrating the Entertainment District. Prepare your virgin eyes. <laughs> They do not have that capability. They do not have the ability to blend in. They are just as bad as the characters of Avatar. As if Inuske doesn't already stand out. The guy has a, a, no shirt, for one thing. <laughs> so this is gonna be the hardest. Meanwhile, Tanjiro is just interested in the lights. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got his work cut out for him. God of babysitting. Just let him go. Let him roam free. <laughs> In paradise. Wow. I'll bet you do have candy. I don't think you've needed to- the candy was not- okay. It's not what you think you need to. That's like a dark turn. Man, how do I talk about this without talking about it? So I'm actually quite interested in this, and not for the reasons most people will immediately assume hearing me say that. And by that I mean I have exposure to this world through my circle, through people I know who have worked in this industry and friends of friends, etc. and my extended network in Korea. The way he just broke down that system is pretty close to what I've learned about it in Korea, except for the buying and selling of women part. I mean, you could make the argument that the equivalent of that would be debt. I think a lot of girls go into it for that reason, or because they don't really see a way to earn a decent living for themselves, whereas there's a lot of income potential in this industry. There's a huge market for this, but I happen to know in these sort of entertainment jobs, and there are so many, so many varying levels of this that may or may not include sex, the goal for a lot of people is to sort of have someone retire them, like have someone of wealth take them out of that life. And I happen to know through my extended circle, like a bunch of girls have done that successfully. Like they have started as entertainers and through that process met someone that they thought was solid or decent enough who was willing to commit to them on some financial level. And that was an arrangement that seemed to work and they ended up with cars and apartments and stuff like that. And I think there's something about that that kind of naturally ruffles feathers, right? It's like, should things be that transactional? One, are you trading something of greater value for let's say money, which is I think on some level universally recognized as not something that should be the highest value, but there are a bunch 
bunch of things complicating that assessment. For example, I think most people already feel compromised in one way or the other in their pursuit of income, right? And you might say that, well, some things are more acceptable to compromise than others, but that's kind of a more subjective point and will come down to the individual. And then when it comes to the actual prostitution element of it, one thing that gave me pause is that depending on the type of job, because there are just some jobs that are straight up prostitution, in these sort of entertainment gigs where you're like hosting people in say like a karaoke room or something like that, the job itself does not delineate sexual activity at all because that's illegal and the shops don't want to get shut down. Basically, it's up to the girl what they want to do. And so the way a lot of girls approach it is they will do their normal hosting job. And if they find someone they like, then they will decide if they want to take extra steps for money. And that gave me some pause when I figured that out, because in that light, now it's a little bit closer just to normal dating. It's not really that out of the ordinary, except that there's money involved. I mean, what is so much worse about that than, say, having a one night stand with someone you meet at a bar, you know? I'm not saying I support it or I like it. Like for me, I don't really place that much value on money that it would make that equation worth it. But at the same time, I recognize that's just sort of my own subjective stance on it and that other people are going to have varying different priorities and what they're looking for in a partner. And it would be really naive of me to assume that money is never one of them. You know, money is often one of them, even for people not engaged in this kind of work. So the deeper I go, the more I kind of judge it based on how open-eyed people are when they go into it, if possible. I cannot believe I'm having this conversation as a result of Demon Slayer, but here we are. Oh yeah, it's also true that in a lot of these places, there is like an ace, like a lead girl. My bride. This is just done. This is just jealous. I feel like the Hashirok probably cannot really support a healthy relationship. They're married, so they're killing. Demon killing. <laughs> These are extra triggered. That just blew open the doors of his mind. This is Zenitsu's last mission. He's going to follow other pursuits. Yeah, so much for that. We threw that out the window immediately. You threw that out the way when you came with a guy dressed as a boar. Alright, it's fine. Uh, we've seen them in the intro. What you found was it's just it's just men. It's just like husbands. <laughs> I've just been waiting here in this closet for some reason. Punched a hole in his stomach, bigger than Rengoku's. Oh my god, what is going on? Okay, oh alright. <laughs> Maybe they can make up with it with skills and delicate conversation. We're running a business here, not a charity. I'm like lost. We got into this dress up thing real fast. I also like how this is the plot of Final Fantasy VII. Which one of these lovely ladies are you picking for the evening? Leave your answers in the comments. <laughs> Is this the same same guy? He's gorgeous. He would. He means that sincerely too. Good job, Sumiko. Well, there goes in his game. Bl blending in as he does. <laughs> yeah, he got to make himself more handsome. Yeah, he just basically like lowered the other's viability so he can score himself. It's the shoes for me. <laughs> that's, that's what captivated me when I first saw my my wife. How I met your mother. <laughs> she came in wearing these gas canisters as shoes. So, a lot more discreet these days. This is gonna end with like, Zenitsu literally killing Tengen and Zui out of jealousy. That's just the center for evaluation. How long can they survive in the mountains? Oh, uh, she's beautiful. He is beautiful, right? I feel like just take off the makeup and you're good. They're gonna figure this out. No, okay. I need that horrendous makeup as a beautiful face. Good job, Inoko. You did it. You made it. This is the, the episode, the arc I never knew I always wanted. Yeah, 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 that's... Of course. Don't open your mouth. How do they not know? Okay, just go with it. Go with the story. Suspension of disbelief. <laughs> Beautiful face, etc. Speaking of training, 
This is the training I need. I need geisha training montage. Although it's not that different from butterfly training, to be honest. <laughs> he made it so much worse with the makeup for all of them. I also happen to know, and I guess it's not really that much of a surprise given that it's the other half of the equation, that there are people who use these sort of entertainment rooms as a way to find wives. Although a lot of times it's sort of like a second wife type of thing. Yeah, there's a lot of resentment in here. A lot of resentment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that'll show him. <laughs> Become the number one hostess in the red light district. That's true revenge. Sumiko's just taking her this life right away, as Sumiko does. My poor innocent Tanjiro. He's in so much danger. Like, you didn't notice that it's a boy? Okay. Suspension of disbelief. <laughs> Right. Oh, right. We're here for the demons. I forgot. We're not here to have fun. This is a job. I feel attacked. They weren't lying about the candy. Is this a metaphor? <laughs> is the candy literal? Because I'm a spy. I'm also a man, in case you didn't notice. Preferred hostess. It's a lot of lies you could have told. Uh, yeah, it's tough for him. Feels like a little bit of a setup. Some weird's going on here. Right. Yeah, and a lot of these girls won't really have lives outside of this this life. There's gonna be one, right? I mean, this is a new arc. We sort of up the ante. There's sort of no going back. It's gonna be upper demons from here on out, probably. Alright, so we're locating them one by one. In this case, a surprisingly better spy than I thought. But his counter to personality. Right, right, yeah, yeah, that would be a dead giveaway. It's really convenient that they haven't yet had clients. What am I looking at? So I'm not sure about this, but I think we may have located the demon. And her blood jujutsu is repeating the same thing three times. <laughs> Lips. This is one of one of my girlfriends, one of my wives. And in this case, he's gonna walk right in and swordless at that. All the disco balls is not gold. Can't believe this is. <laughs> this is an art. <laughs> this is the commentary I never thought I'd be giving. But you never know with these shows. Honestly, it's fun. It's exciting. What is with the paper? We just saw it's connected to the demon. Does it have deeper meaning or significance? <laughs> I see, so it's not all just cover, huh? If a red light district is worth its salt, sunrise means nothing. It's good. Kids are gonna have a lot of fun, this arc. They're gonna have the kind of fun that only the poor people in Arcane can have. Give us some Taisho secrets about this stuff. I'm intrigued and also alarmed. You do that. Go for it. Fulfill your dreams. Or are you indeed? May all your wildest dreams come true, Kimiko, or whatever they called you. Wow. So yeah, like I said, <laughs> this is the arc I didn't know I really wanted. I've never seen anything like this as a topic before in shows. I've only seen this in games. But yeah, I feel like Red Light District is a great setting, and it sort of makes it even more interesting that these kids are so, well, kids. I mean, they're adults in so many ways, but not in this way, which makes it hilarious. The being disguised as girls thing, it does require sort of a suspension of disbelief, but it doesn't matter. I get a little bit confused sometimes by like target audiences in Japan. My understanding is that this is a shonen, right? And that shonen are generally aimed at younger boys, but we have like a prostitution arc. Though I guess just in general with media, people recognize only what they're already aware of. It's why adults and kids can both watch the same shows, but 
get totally different things out of them. There are inside jokes for adults that kind of slip by kids who are not aware of them. But unless this was a translation mistake, this makes very explicit reference to prostitutes, which I'm all for, you know, kids gotta know. But then, and maybe this is a Western thing, there is sort of a weird split between what's acceptable in terms of violence and what's acceptable in terms of sexuality. Like, we just watched Tanjiro's father figure get a hole ripped in his stomach, so why shouldn't we have minor allusions to sex work? So yeah, we're in a bold, neon new world with a lot of potential, and we're also moving pretty quickly, which is exciting. I feel like this arc is gonna have a whole lot in store.